Yeah, I'm looking at my settings. Audio, video, everything is rolling. We're yeah, good to you go, got a man. nice nice setup back there. Thank you, thank you. I actually moved uh, recently. I'm kind of staying at like an Airbnb, so it's, all this furniture is not actually mine. So, so they had a gamer chair at the Airbnb. Oh, not the gamer chair. Like the, <laughs> I brought my actual setup, but like no, all the stuff behind me. I got a comment on one of my YouTube videos saying like, it looks like you moved into a kid's house. And yeah, I'm like, yeah, yeah. It seems like an insult, but he's actually not wrong. There's actually my landlord has a bunch of kids. So no, it's the same thing with uh, like the ashamed video. They're like, ah, oh, I'd be ashamed too if I had that fucking dorky rig i'm like dude that's my computer like that is my video. <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah well dude look i'm i'm so so excited to have you on the podcast johnny from health is joining us uh dude i'm not sure how familiar you are with you know my channel but um it's interesting because health and you know your music doesn't necessarily fit the norm of my channel so i'm you know, I feature kind of like metalcore, a lot of breakdowns and things like that. But I also am a big advocate for like progressive metal and progressive music. Basically, I, I tend to favor things that are not generic or cookie cutter. Um, so that's why I really love featuring you guys. And I think uh, a lot of um, not a lot of fans, but a lot of my fans have discovered health uh, through my videos. So I hope that this podcast continues to uh, help expose my fans to your music. I oh, totally, man. I mean, I've been watching you for a minute. Uh, we we really wanted to get on, so I'm really pumped to be here because, like, um, and that's like that thing too. It's like uh, we went. There's just a lot of people. I would sell, you know, modern in the metalcore space, or some people say modern metal, where it's like they all know us and they're they all listen to health, and it's like this this thing that kind of comes up. So I think just a lot of people on the the fan side or maybe I see the connection, you know. And I got a big uh, when I started watching you, I think it was uh, you were people, you know, when that new Bad Omens album came out. Those people were like. Hey, I think these guys listen to you. I, th I think they're they 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 like you guys. I'm like, and I was like, I don't hear this. I'm like, this sounds like sounds like a ki keyboard. And then uh, and I and I watched your review. And then I I met them. I hung out with them. They're great dudes. And they're like, oh yeah, we love you guys. We're listening to you guys a bunch for this record. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. oh, there you go. There you go. Never mind. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. There's this uh, one song from Bad Omens that's called "What Do You Want from Me." I'm like, this literally sounds like a health song. And a lot of people are saying like, oh, it sounds like Nine Inch Nails. I'm like, yeah, yeah. To me, it sounds more like all, all uh, similar wheelhouse. <laughs> I mean, to, to me personally, I was like, I don't know. I don't really like. I was like, sure, it could be, could be, could be anyone, you know? <laughs> yeah, and it, they actually played your music before their set, too, and that's when it kind of clicked for me. I'm like, okay, these guys are fans of health. Yeah, where are you guys are based? Um, You weren't at the LA show, were you? No, 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 I'm from Toronto, so that's why it's oh, all shit. dark and, yeah. Oh, okay. You do yeah. not have much of an accent. Uh, My YouTube comments say otherwise. Apparently, I say a boot, no. a boot. I'm literally... A boot, yeah, a boot. Uh, do you know this brand, Oh, yeah, Tim Hortons? I know Tim Hortons. I know Tim oh, Hortons. yeah, it, it's junk. Toronto. What I like now, Toronto, people have all this like a Jamaican slang. It's like everyone, no matter who. Oh, it is. yeah. But yeah. The, the Toronto is terrible, too. We all it's have. Like, this. waste man or whatever. <laughs> Some, uh, kid was explaining it to me. I was cracking up. No, they all say fam a lot. Basically, fam is our like second word fam and A. Fam and A? Yeah. We still got A. A is a classic. Uh, we get no some friends of Canada. They try to hide their accent, but they, ha they have to say A, so they change it to hey. Oh, uh, okay. It's like, oh, something about that. Hey, I'm like, hey, just fucking say <laughs> hey. Like, what the fuck, dude? Well, uh, dude, like, um, I've been listening to your new singles a lot from uh, Rat Wars, and I guess my uh, understanding of the music so far is like, you know, it seems like kind of an extension to um, Disco Four a little bit, but you know, maybe I, I just kind of want to know what do you plan on doing, or what what is different about this record? What do you want to achieve that's a little bit different with this record as opposed to the other ones? So uh, Rat Wars is definitely the, you know, I know every asshole says it's like, it's our darkest, heaviest yet. But um, it's actually <laughs> the darkest. It's melodically the darkest on purpose. We chose keys like that. Uh, we, you know, we had some stuff that's strong. We're like, get it out of here. It's not dark enough. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it was, you know, we're always like, you know, every album, we're kind of just adding to the vocabulary what we do. They're kind of a continuation. And like, there's always some new gimmick. And this one, it's like, all right, we're just going to give the people what they want. We're going to have fucking arpeggiators. Like, we've resisted doing it forever. And the just give the people what they want, you know? <laughs> Excuse my ignorance. What's an arpeggiator? You know, like a, when a keyboard's like... Like an arpeggio. Yeah. I just... Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, you know, classic, uh, you know, electronic music, everything. Yeah. Obviously synth wave. And just like it's, you know, we we were using electronic... Uh, I was, I was, you know, since Death Magic, I was electronic production. We just did every which way to do sequencing, but not an arpeggiator because we didn't want it to be too, like, retro 80s or synth wave. And I was like just give the people what they want you know and that's the thing with volume four you know with like all the stuff we were making we're like this is heavy this is heavy people like this it's like 
you gotta speak the language, man. Put a fucking metal guitar in there. <laughs> just sample a metal <laughs> guitar. And then once we do that, people are like, fuck yeah. I'm like, ah, oh, just you gotta get over yourself, you know? It's same thing too. We used to not have black t-shirts. So like, we can't have black t-shirts. Everyone, we gotta be different. It's like, give the motherfuckers black t-shirts. Just you can't beat the classics. Just do it, you know? Just do yeah, it your own way. It's so true. Okay, so you guys are definitely trying to be darker. Like, why is it that the fan base wants something more metal or dark sounding from you guys? They just they just like it we you know we are a very focused group you know we talk to our fans constantly i'm on discord every day uh, i'm at the merch table we're just a very focused group band we just we give the fans what they want you know that's a uh, and uh they they want that's what they want <laughs> it's at, anytime i make a uh, content for you guys i always get like the health fan base is here or something they, they always comment that it seems like you guys have like a really dedicated fan base i also see comments a lot saying like it's the best discord community too you guys it are, is uh it is by far i would say yeah why is that it's just not a. It's just really fun. It's really active. People are hilarious and talking the whole time. They're friendly. There's not a bunch of assholes. I don't know what your experience was like growing up. I would go on forums of bands I liked, and everyone's like, "Fuck you, you pe-. like." It was just so <laughs> hostile, and it's just like, "Oh god," and then just awkward and hateful, and everyone just hates themselves. And that's not the vibe on ours. So whatever the selective pressures or being a health fan, these weird personality things to select for, make a good hang. You know, I really love. Uh, our fans and I hang out with them all the time and I don't I'm never like oh god I'm always like yeah what's up guys like being, I, I have a great time yeah you like know? being too cool for them or something or just like, something I know there's like I know I would never say but like I know artists who make like some really extreme music and they like really kind of hate their fans like they love having fans but they don't want to talk to them because their fans are these really like hateful you know maladjusted people and that's not the case with ours our friends are, are very strange I'll tell you that <laughs> but they're they're great you know but the stranger the better they always have they always make the most interesting conversations. Yeah, and they're kind of like um, they're like a coalition of different groups, but they all have something in common. They all get along, so it's great, you know. No, I I, I love that because I I want to just plug my Discord and say my Discord is also great too. And it's because like I, I'm sure I'm sure you have a great Discord. It's literally because we just have a diverse group and people are allowed to share opinions. That's kind of like the the motto. Like you guys, like it, it, the whole point is just respect each other. You can be from any part of the world. Uh, have any. Uh, view that you want but just be nice that's it and it's cool but um and another uh discord that i'm actually in and it actually segues into my next next question is that i really like the sleep token uh discord i feel like it's a good group of people there strange too and uh I, not a, not official not an official discord no no we found that out oh because we like to partner i don't know if you want to do this we like to partner with other discords of like um just we put like a friend thing just do goofy shit like We've done, we haven't done this forever, but we used to have just game off. Like it was like, all right, our Discord versus your Discord, fucking Halo Infinite, or whatever, you know, some fucking game, just some funny shit, or we play Jackbox or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So I've done that before, but you would play with other Discord communities, is why you said. Yeah, yeah. We did that. We did that before. We did. Um, it's kind of, kind of. Uh, I kind of want to do this work. It's, it's a great thing, also because we like it. We're kind of like, um, what do you call it? We got some god gamers, so it's like really unfair on our side. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> uh, I'm terrible, but like I can have them on my team. Okay, well, I have some video game questions down the road, but uh, I, I'll come back to it later. But now, um, the tour was Sleep Token, so I find that extremely interesting. Sleep Token is uh, one of my favorite bands at the moment. How did you guys end up on that tour? Uh, just just pure luck. I've never talked to them. Um, you know, uh, we were probably one of millions of bands that submitted our name, and we got the email back. We're like, Really? holy shit okay yeah let's do this like fuck yeah you know so it's very exciting i mean we're super pumped i mean the wembley arena wait you're playing that show cool. yeah oh, London. It's gonna be I, amazing dude that's the uh i think that's the show that like sold out in like uh 10 minutes or 10 something. minutes yeah 10 minutes we got booked on it later she was already booked <laughs> oh true 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 they didn't announce any openers that's amazing yeah. I, i'm so excited for that i actually am even tempted to just take a like a plane just to see both these like you and like Sleep Token are some of my favorite. Yeah, if, you, if you want lists, we could we could hook it up. If you want to fly out? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you're you're press you're a press guy. You know. Yeah. You're an influencer. You're well, important. You're a big wheel at the Cracker Factory. I know. I, it's funny because I really want to talk to Sleep Token too, but they're so hidden with their identity. You I don't can't know. Interview I, them. I know. I mean, well, you can't. That'll kind of ruin it, right? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Unless they put like some automatic or like voice filter or something. Yeah. Like a <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> super cheesy like a whole two hours of that uh, I mean, aside though they don't have to do interviews you know yeah 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 yeah, yeah. but um 
what are some bands that you hope to tour with in the future? Because you got an upcoming tour. I didn't see any uh, openers for your tour. Oh, our tour, we got um, we've got uh, Pixel Grip and King Yosef opening. Uh, we oh, tried. Okay. There's a lot of bands we admire right now. They were trying to bring on tour, but um, everyone is fucking touring right now, and especially a lot of there's a lot of heavy bands we want to bring, and everyone who makes really extreme music just never stops fucking touring. So it's like you can't book them because they are just opening for X band as like one of four and then they're going to do their own tour like three months later like they even have shows competing with each other it's like it's it's ridiculous you know but uh, we have this awesome I love these two groups we're bringing really really into right now yeah I'm actually not too familiar with them again I'm so into the modern metal space so I'll... yeah uh, King King Yosef is, is industrial metal but oh, he's, yeah? uh, you know but uh, definitely on that tip he's you know he plays he's just I saw him open for Converge and uh, he oh. like Godflesh and then uh, Pixel Grip is I call you know New Goth, um, which is very big in LA. I don't I don't uh, I don't know if it's I think it's big in Toronto. Um, it's not big in New York for Strangely, and it's like a new generation of people who are doing like uh, EBM and and goth music, and uh, they're one of my favorites by far. And they have really really good songs. Interesting. Okay, I'm definitely down to check them out because I would love to feature more artists like this on my channel, but unfortunately, like. You know, if it doesn't have a breakdown, it doesn't tend to do yeah, well I know. for yeah. views. For me. <laughs> <laughs> but it makes for good reaction content, right? If I'm being a yeah, reactor. Yeah. Um, like, it's weird because, like, one of my favorite songs of, I think it was, like, 2021 was Poppy, uh, your collaboration with Poppy, Dead Flowers. Yeah, Dude, yeah. I love that song, but it, it wasn't, like, the most engaging reaction because I'm just kind of vibing out. But um, Yeah, also, the beat doesn't change. Uh, but, like, I don't know, it was just, it was just vibey. It, she wrote this demo on, she recorded herself playing guitar on her phone, and then Jake kind of, like, uh, interpreted that, and it kind of ended up being this really, like, gothy, kind of almost, like, typo-negative kind of rollicking drone. And uh, he he put, like, this uh, temp beat, and I was like, oh, don't change it. It's kind of tight. Just, like, let it roll. You know, it's like Joe Division. Like, beat just doesn't fucking change, you know? Yeah, I, I find that super interesting. But you were talking about, like, some extreme metal bands. Who are... Uh... If you could choose, who were some of the picks? If you could have well, the option, well, we, we uh, we've been trying to ch- tour with our friends Full of Hell forever, and um, they really want to. They just can't stop touring, and uh, I, I'm hoping we're gonna be able to work that for uh, Europe with them. But um, they just don't stop. Like I just like they just played like two days ago, you know. And then I think they were just here like a, a month or two before that in LA, you know. Do you guys spend a lot of time touring, or is it a lot of writing? Uh, well, we just sure tour like endlessly. You know, we're grown now. Obviously, want trying to put out more music and definitely doing big you know event tours it's gone to the days that we can just tour just endlessly but i mean fuck next year though we're, we're touring pretty much all year though so i don't know what am i even talking about yeah yeah well <laughs> I, i'm definitely going to that toronto show i can't wait for that yeah. one okay uh, yeah yeah toronto, toronto would be great uh hit me up we'll, we'll list you yeah i think i already got hit up by one of your um oh marketing perfect. people actually that's how this whole oh, podcast yeah. got set up so you're in toronto eh um yeah. there's this hey. restaurant you love it's called poutini's Closed down. We're so bummed. Is it just poutine? Yeah, but it was the best poutine. They had like pulled pork on the poutine and uh, they had all this shit. It was so fucking fire. That's so locations. basic. That's so generic. <laughs> every every night though, after the show, I'd be like, oh, let's go to poutinis. <laughs> let's go out for it. This yeah. is so good. Yeah, no, actually, uh, I feel like um, only because I'm around it so much that poutine mm-hmm. is like kind of overrated. There are some good places. I've never actually tried this poutine place, but like. Well, your, your blood alcohol level has to be, you know, like X, then it's fucking just incredible, you know? So. If yeah. I'm in Toronto, I'm probably pretty drunk. So I'm like, that poutine's real good. Okay, so I think the only um, one of the few things that we have you beat food wise is beer. Mm-hmm. I think we have better beer than you guys in the states. Uh you know, it's, I drink Mexican beer exclusively. So oh, like Modelo and yeah. Salt? I mean, I'm I just bought 48 Pacifico. We're gonna have a little barbecue, but um, like uh, Corona Familiar and the brown bottles from my favorite. Uh, it's a special one. They don't they don't serve it everywhere, but they have it here in California. They're really great beer. Um, I mean, what's your favorite Canadian beer? Well, it's just, we, I'm like the basic hit. Or are you talking about like, oh, the fancy shit, like Maudit? Ma- oh, that's who I am. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, double IPA, a nice stout or something. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm, I only drink cheap, <laughs> regular cheap beer. Beers. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, that shit's Maudit is, is brilliant. It's just like, you can't drink that all night. You'll you'll have the you'll die. Like you have the worst headache in the fucking world the next day. You know. True, and you can't drink this craft beer all night too. You feel like total garbage. It's so heavy it's and horrible. hops, and it's like a nice tasting kind of beer, right? It's like eating a loaf of bread or something. You know. <laughs> yeah, it's pure yeah, just yeah. carbs. Yeah. Uh, I have a question here, Tom. About you know your music is so non-conventional, and I can tell that you guys write music depending on how you feel. But is there something that you like? your music to be played on like maybe 
be featured on the radio a little bit more or more like uh, video game soundtracks or even movies in the future? I mean, I'll take anything, really. I, there's nothing I would say no to. But uh, we would die to do another like big video game, like a uh, big budget game, narrative game. I'd really love to do something. I think we should be in an action or sci-fi sort of setting. That would make the most sense. But, you know, something kind of you and RPG, we'd, we'd really, really love to do uh, a, a video game again. So uh, obviously our main focus being the band that takes a lot of time but if we got a great offer we would you know we'd clear schedule we'd, we'd delay albums and stuff to do that right now yeah so with rockstar games did they hit you up or did you kind of like put in something? they just hit us up it makes no sense especially you can hear the, our music at the time it's just like it's like atonal it's like, rah, 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 it's like <laughs> bizarro noise scene and uh we just got this it is kind of funny so i had stopped playing video games for a long time i saw reddit or remsh on tv and i'm like fuck man i i gotta do this i gotta play this and uh started playing that and uh, and I, I got at the same time I got like Dark Souls really getting into playing on this PS3 and then we get this email like hey Rockstar Games wants to take you guys to lunch in New York and I was like what if they asked us to score a game I'm like that's nah, bullshit that never happened I'm like maybe they're gonna ask us to have a song in the next GTA something like that how cool would that be and we get to the to the dinner and like how do you guys think about scoring a game I'm like damn it's like did I manifest this it's like the secret. <laughs> 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 that's no it's wild it's how i discovered you guys it, it literally there, I, there, I think a lot it, of people right no definitely it, it wasn't immediate it was kind of funny like at the time when it came out like we were in such like a a hipster like a like a hipster zone with with the the music like a band we were touring through like i had the cd max pan on the table he's like dude don't put that out there it looks fucking lame like it's dorky and i'm like i don't know and then later as time goes on all the younger artists that we've uh, worked with they're super cool I'm like, damn, why would these guys even want to work with us? I'm like, oh, dude, I saw you guys play you guys Max Payne. Like, <laughs> so like it, it became like this really long lasting thing. And so many fans now are from Max Payne. But at the time, you know, there's kind of a trickle down from the video game to actually someone checking out and following your band, you know? Yeah, yeah. And, well, that's literally how I discovered you guys. It was uh, through that game. I didn't, you know, the music was like, it was just background music until that one scene in Max Payne 3 where you're going through the airport and then Tears comes on. And I remember... That I had to pause. Oh, sorry. No, I just had to pause. I'm like, whoa, this game or this song is so cool. And I just had to soak it in. And then I be instantly became a fan of you guys after Tears. That was a really inspired idea by uh, uh, the music director Rockstar. They're like, what if an original song with vocals just kicked in like at the climax? And I was like, in my head, I'm like, that sounds kind of cheesy. But I'm like, all right, let's fucking try it. And we did it. And we're like, OK, this is great. You know, this is really cool. Yeah, I still think it's like the best use of a song in a video game that I've ever heard. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Seriously, man. I know uh, Rockstar is really good for that. They've had a couple of things with Red Dead Redemption uh, with some original pieces, too. But I remember the health song just uh, standing out. Um, yeah, Yvonne and Tony, uh, who are the the music directors, at, um, they're just incredible taste. Like, um, go way back, like, know all the coolest shit. And that's why those games, like all Rockstar games, have very, you know, even turn the, the radio stations, they have such cool music. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know? Oh yeah, Grand Theft Auto Six. Like most of the radio stations have like amazing songs mm -hmm. from somewhat underground artists too. Um, so, would you ever actually try putting out like I don't know what you do, like I guess an email or something or a portfolio to like certain like game publishers? Or uh, we haven't really gone after it much, but there is a website, secret one on our website where we have like all of our, cause you know, we've done other things. Like we've had song, we have a song in cyberpunk 77, you know, mm -hmm. now we have a song in ultra kill. Uh, we have songs using a lot of video game trailers like scorn hitman three, I think. Um, and we did all this stuff. There's all the stuff we've done, like not even under our names. Like we've done all these advertisements for like league of legends championships stuff, you know, oh, <laughs> like okay. the stuff you just wouldn't expect something. We're not gonna really promote that much. But um, so we have like these little small credits, but we yeah, we'd really like to do a big old uh, big undertaking, like take, you know, the year plus thing like Max Payne 3 again. Well, another thing is I'm wondering what the writing process was like, because I'm sure it was completely different than how it was writing in like a normal studio album. So how was it different writing like, you know, a, a soundtrack as opposed to a regular album? So the soundtrack thing, what's great is so we was a video game, right? So. It's interactive music, so the the way they do it different every game. But for that game, we had six layers of like stems, like six audio tracks that could be recombined uh, yeah. at any point to make different different emotions or be programmed. However, you know, there's there's ten guys in the room. If you kill fifty percent, or if this event happens, you play this combination of stems, um, and they're looping indefinitely because it might take one guy ten minutes, one guy two minutes, and uh, and so what we do, we just you know, one was suspense and one is this, and we we kind of come up with these six layers while watching the gameplay footage and record to it. And the, what makes it easy is that if it's not working, you know, in one second, 
you're just like this sucks and you just do something else true but if you okay. make it your if you make if you make your own record you can slave on a song and even up until it comes out you're like is this fucking terrible does this suck you know it's like this is this is lame did, did we lose it is everyone gonna hate this like you just don't you're just full of all these doubts but like they're the, the you're the soundtrack you're serving something else you're just helping to enhance this moment and you can tell immediately so it's actually way less stressful in a lot of ways you know that's interesting. more like work but there's just this, there's no the load off i don't know actually that's not true. i'm sure a lot of musicians they whatever they make they're like this is fucking badass but like we're always like is this bad like you know like there's all, there's all these things. it's like that you know uh, well your music tends to do uh pretty well amongst like critics doesn't it i think like pitchfork has yeah. called you guys out fantano has uh at least made videos on you even if he doesn't like a record fantano at least he's featuring you which you know it's kind of a yeah yeah I, we, you know it's we've had we've had a lot of critical came we've also had like you know not i mean when we kind of volume four is the album where we really like added heavy metal guitars and started being like hey metal people like this is for you like can we come hang out and <laughs> pitchfork gave that shit a 3.4 they fucking shellacked us like <laughs> We were just like, that was it. We were done. They tore up our card. Never coming back. We haven't been on Pitchfork since. It's so true, right? <laughs> As soon, I feel like Fantano is kind of the same thing. He doesn't review, or when he does review metal music, it's always going to be like a like a low number, generally, right? So yeah, I yeah. do feel like it's like two different audiences. Like there's like the um, indie pop heads or like the more metal heads. And uh, I don't know, I guess with me, I kind of fall more in between. I, I love both uh, styles. And it's cool that you guys are tapping into the metal genre. I even made a video, uh, a little TikTok saying like non-metal music for metal heads. Like, cause I, even though it still has like some sort of metal elements, I'm just trying to pull in the fan base too for you, for you guys with my content. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's industrial, you know? Yeah. It's industrial. And, uh, and also, yeah, it's a thing too. Like, you know, we just played fucking brutal assaults in uh Czech Republic. That is an extreme fucking every band before and after us is black metal or grind core. And, everyone knew us there everyone loved us so yeah. it's it's not you know you think it's a record scratch it's not you know it, it, it's it's great and we really appreciate it we've been really like very welcomed by you you you'd think the stereotype it's like oh they're gonna fucking hate us they're gonna think we're pussies they're like what's up dudes like everyone's <laughs> very excited <laughs> that's awesome that's, and well yeah. you guys have also worked with like uh nine inch nails you've been, even shared a stage right but uh yeah yeah definitely and, and, and lab of god and all this stuff it's like it's not it's just you know people be like hey you guys can't play that good <laughs> like, yeah. like like it's like you know like the the musicianship of the average metal band is like through the roof you know and but you know we're industrial it's different we got electronics we got different shit oh yeah you, no, you yeah no, no no one minds no one minds no one's ever complained yeah no you work with more with like uh synths and sounds and uh not, the drumming's pretty fucking intense though yeah yeah thank well that's beach that's not me but yeah 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 for sure but like uh, speaking of like a lot of these collabs that you've done, is there any um, artists that you'd like to do collabs with that you haven't had the opportunity to do yet? I mean, there's tons. I mean, like, you know, in terms of like, uh, everyone's like, oh, who's your dream collab? It's like, we already did it. You know, we already hit Mount Everest with Nine Inch Nails. So like, I don't really, everything else at this point is like uh, gravy. <laughs> but uh, um, there's tons of bands. I mean, like, there's just bands I like right now. Like, I would love to work with Knock Loose. I'm not exactly oh. sure it would work, but that would be tight. You know, I'd really like that. Um, there's a lot of, there's just a lot of stuff I'm listening to. I definitely would like to do it with Bad Omens. Um, and I had, oh, uh, well, some of these people I'm actually talking to, so I don't want to spill any beans. We, okay. we got some good ones cooking. I'll tell you that. How about that? Uh, and we actually, like, we just finished one with like a, like a really classic band from, uh, from the nineties and it's awesome. And I'm really excited about it. So we are cooking on them right now. The, uh, Rat Wars is going to have a disco five, you know, just like yeah. disco four for calling four, you know, I figured as much, um, you know, my own two cents, if you got bad omens, that would be, um, extremely like that'd be you have the metal heads. You don't have their heart with that one. For yeah, sure. yeah. I, th I think it'd be, think it'd be, it'd be rad. Uh, but yeah, their show was great. Uh, I, I just went in uh, in L.A. That was the, with uh, Was it the with Era and it was uh, Era and and no, no, sorry, I see stars. stars. I went to that tour too. Yeah, yeah. The uh, did they they had pyro indoors? No, no. There they was didn't. so much fucking pyro, and I was backstage, and I was like. No, aren't you guys kind of worried about like a great white situation with all this fucking pyro? And he's like, "Who's great white? <laughs> Who is great white?" I don't know. Okay, you don't know. Sorry, no, this is a really old not. reference. All right, so, yeah. so I think it was I think it was the two thousands. Great white is this, is this eighties hair metal band, and in the two thousands they had a club show where they set off pyro inside, and it, it's, I should be laughing. It's terrible. It caught fire and it killed like half the audience. Oh, or killed a size amount of people. So it's like it's it's this thing in the industry like, oh fuck, don't pull a great white. Everyone got much more careful about a pyro. 
I think some fa- some other musician from some other band got in trouble because he talked shit on stage like, oh, it only hit it. Great white fans. Who cares? Or something like that. You know, it's like this whole industry thing. Yeah. Super old by now. But, you know, just, you know, it's dangerous. So I All don't right. I didn't know the band name, but I'm well aware of that story. That story is yeah. fucking haunting. Yeah. I, I think it's like a 500 cap club, obviously much smaller. Very dangerous. You can't put pyro in a, in a room that small. It's very dangerous, you know. Yeah, totally. But like Bad Omens had their own issue with like, um, since there's like a lot of new concert goers with like TikTok, um, they're finding them through TikTok. So they've uh-huh. never been to a concert before and they're always end up passing out. Like they had to stop the that. show. <laughs> you That's love it? So yeah. tight. <laughs> uh, actually, the most fucked up version, of, this is a terrible version of it, is um, we played a Vancouver and uh, the woman there was like, hey, Suicide Boys played here and someone was selling like bad uh zannies and there was like 32 fentanyl overdoses in the crowd and they were just reviving kids and they had to revive somebody they just ran on stage and just stopped the show they're just like people are just like we're gonna have like there's gonna be a like hundred dead kids if we don't so they saved them all they were narcan every one of them oh man just, that is intense I'm like, I'm like just dark but if vancouver apparently it's like uh, we've got a problem here in la but it's like the fentanyl thing is really really bad yeah I that's think- why at our, at our shows not the plug but um and overdose, we partner with them. They're amazing uh, people in LA that supply free Narcan and free fentanyl testing. Always free at our merch tables and all US shows. And oh. we're having a collab. We're gonna have our special health branded one for this upcoming tour. Plug away. That's awesome. Pray to God you don't have to use it, but if you do, yeah. Well, it's funny because like your music definitely, um, the sound of it is very. What's the word I'm looking for? It makes me want to just do drugs. Okay, so, sure. If you say so. You know, <laughs> I, this is coming from me. Just say. Like, okay, okay. Yeah. So I, I think that's actually really awesome that you guys are advocating that for sure. Hey, we need every fan we can get. We can't can't lose can't lose a single one. Absolutely. Also, that would man, that would be suck, man. Your fucking mom to hear that. It'd be so so fucking lame. No, totally. Uh, well, well, obviously that you'd be dead. That'd be worse. But just still, just that thought, you know. Besides drugs and everything, uh, you know, your music is so unique speaking of like how trippy it is actually um is there ever something that just a little too weird for your music that you've or like scrap it like just no this doesn't fit uh we tried stuff where just like uh, you know we trust each other so if one member hates something we just they veto it you know it's like we try like if uh, if someone really hates something deeply there's a good reason but and we we trust each other and understand each other is even if like you don't love something or like oh well that's that's good well let's keep working on this we'll get it right so you know we like some weird sounds, but also, you know, we are pretty traditional, like our modern stuff. It's like it's verse, chorus, verse. You know, we want mm-hmm. you to like it. It is pretty pop. Dancey. Yeah. Uh, we, we would love. Yeah. I've got simple ass beats. We want you to like it. But yeah, if there's something cool and interesting, weird, we'd love to do it. We'd love to have it. It just as long as it's good, as long as it's not fucking annoying. Yeah. And, and you know. No, I, I, sorry, don't mean to interrupt, but I, I definitely yeah. like that you guys also like, you know, I feel like the earlier stuff was a little bit more experimental with structures, but like then you have gone to like the verse, chorus, verse, chorus, bridge, chorus and other variations to that. But like and it's more dancey. There's like a definite like formula that you can dance and mellow out to. What was the direction to kind of go into more just vibey, dancey songs, you know? Well, it was kind of a lot of stuff. Everything's really accidental. We were just sort of uh, responding to things. And like around the turn of the 2010s, we were just like all this electronic music was just getting just massive. Just the production had just taken this leap. And there's this weird thing where it's like in the 2000s, it's very frustrating because every band just sounded really thin um, because of just the, the you know, transition to electronic, uh, to, uh, to digital recording and just lower budgets, et cetera. And it was always frustrating. You can never get records loud enough in the, at that time. And something you this uh, electronic music is coming out made by kids in their bedroom that's like four times louder and is knocking like really hard with these uh, over the top transients. And we're like, hey man, we're this extreme band making this really atonal, like screeching music. Like we've always been, the idea has always been really heavy and really abrasive and really intense. It's like, we need this technology. Like, wow, these kick, this kick drum is like beating my ass. Like, we need this. So let's figure out a way to do it. And so we started working with it. Like, we're not going to start making, you know, dan- DJ music, but. We make this band focused song based music and it's over time, like certain things kind of just by nature of doing it. It's like it's like it's kind of like Depeche Mode. Oh, it's kind of like a synth pop, but we can get a little harder. We can get this sound. And we were trying to do the synthetic metal sound that's very stilted, but it was using these sounds. And that's why songs like Stone Fist, it's also my fault being a terrible writer. It's like it's just a one note riff, but it's this like gets this cuts processed warped backwards synth that had like a heavy guitar vibe with the sub bass and like building a song around that, but we still want you to like it. So we have this kind of pop chorus 
And that's you know, kind of moving with that. People didn't really get that message. And that's why by volume four, we're like, get a metal guitar in there and just back it up with like all these like fucking tuned plucks and just let's make this thing as heavy as we can make it, you know, and still have it be a heavy guitar. What do you mean by like your problem though? Cause I fucking love stone fist. Oh no, no, no problem. That was great. I just feel like the message wasn't certain people. Like I think a lot of the int intended people, it's a kind of thing. Like when I was saying before focus group, like I, I hang at the merch table every night. I talk to fans every night, hang with fans every night. And even when we were in this sort of, you know, where were there when we were in this like avant-garde noise weirdo scene or when they were in this like the sort of indie hipster sort of scene, the people who are most passionate about our band were guys who were there, but like, you know, loved fucking tool or just love like, you know, really heavy metal bands or they, you know, all the reference they'd bring up and they would see analogs between us and really heavy bands, not other indie bands. And so that was kind of the thing. It's like, we're making this weird synthetic heavy modern rock in our in our minds and like we're not even it's not being served to the right people the people are gonna really appreciate it which people who like heavy music you know yeah true. that's kind of the, so those kind of ideas sort of germinate over time and it's nothing's really planned you just you just start experimenting and the sound just goes this way and people respond to it you know so and that's how and now we've come all the way here yeah it's cool that a lot of metalheads like myself too are like totally vibing out to your music there is something like that it's kind of like you know it is super heavy at times it's not like heavy with like pitch shifted guitars but there's a certain yeah. heaviness oh hey to this it. album first album we've down tuned oh really yeah c sharp c sharp standard I'm not going any lower than that i don't care oh okay no, no that's like Fuck. i know that's like that's like old school that's uh, old you school know. man no well we we love metal but um uh, so much of our metal taste is like kind of dated you know like we just i just love pantera and i love a lot of um i love a lot of like original i love judas priest and stuff like that and obviously there's there's like there's more modern like i love converge um, converge and shit like that but like draw i'm like no drop a no way oh man <laughs> no, i'm cabinet cabinet c sharp so we did c sharp standard you know i actually uh respect that too because like um I make a, the criticism a lot that a lot of modern metal it's pitch shifted like eight string nine string guitars where like the mm -hmm. sounds are inaudible so it, it's cool sounding but it gets so overdone and it's just there to, for the sake of sounding heavy so well and it's and you know also like uh from the old days like uh, um you know I was really like especially at the time like following I used to read all the metal magazines and there's this kind of arms race to get heavier and heavier and kind of down tune and down tune and a lot of stuff just started getting really just like like you know obviously there's people who do obviously i think knock loose their drop a they do it great yeah and it's weird because they're like a, they're a hardcore adjacent band too usually yeah. that stuff's a little bit and, more but, standard. but also knock knock loose's albums are produced really well i really like what that producer's doing and also like you know if you even see knock loose live he has a foot switch he hits an 808 they bury an 808 on the big hits that really uh, really okay. takes it up a notch. i love it that's why i really love it i love what they're doing they're, they're really good at it um so uh, for us also we're going to be programming all this stuff and we're going to have sub bass and all this stuff that's got to come through if we're getting down to a we got no room to move if we're going to be melodic and it's going to be really low and you're not going to hear everything as well because we're going to build this sort of sound out and personally i love black sabbath the down to black sabbath albums c sharp standard it's like it's for me it's a very classy down oh there's still standard, standard. We, play, we, we play in standard you know yeah there's like a handful of songs that are in drop d on volume four but pretty much everything is uh everything is standard and now c sharp standard interesting okay um well if you're like not the most familiar with modern metal are you aware of the new subgenre that's becoming more popular called thal no no <laughs> okay okay do you know have you ever heard of this band called veal giarta no uh, uh i thought of see i watch um i watch you i watch finn mckenty i'm you know i'm kind of stick with stuff i'm checking out stuff daily but i have no fucking clue yeah i i like finn he's a good guy um but uh i guess veal giarta is I think it's a very cool band uh, for you to check out on your own time. Basically, they're from Sweden and they're progressive metal. But Fall is basically like low tune guitars with bends and ambience. And they're just really weird structurally and rhythmically. It's very confusing, even though mm -hmm. like it's four by four. It's um, also they add in like nature sounds and weird breaks before the next hit or something. <laughs> it's very it's one of the most That's tight. <laughs> oh, dude, you, I think you you got to check it out. It's so dark and moody, but also tells like a story. Um, uh -huh. It's a it's an acquired taste. Is it like fantasy theme? Because Thal? That yeah, dude, like, yeah. honestly, if you look at the album art, it looks like um, where the wild things are or whatever. Like, you know, uh -huh. old children's book. Uh, of course. Oh, yeah. A classic book. Yeah. Yeah. So the artwork kind of looks like that. And um, but the point is, like, their guitar playing is so unique and their sound is so unique that they're 
changing the sound of modern metal. So a lot of metal that I'm hearing this year are all introducing fall riffs and fall sounds. And uh, oh wow, okay. I think oh man, I think fall with um, your style of music actually would be a really cool combo. So you know, this might be here. I'm writing this down right now. This might be like if we find one, we'll just reach around like you guys want to do a song. Fuck it, you know. <laughs> That'd be so cool. There, it's hard to spell their name. V I L D. Uh, J A R T A, I think. Viljarta. Vil Jesus. J -A Here, I'll, what's the? I'll look up the genre name. Thal. T H A L L. Yeah, and then you'll see Viljarta and Humane's Last Breath. But Viljarta is like the main band. Oh, Humane's Last Breath. I really like them. Yeah, I didn't know that, that. That. So that's the genre. So those guys I've been listening to for a while because you know we're like we're always looking for kind of this innovation in the heavy space, and those were guys where I'm like. They're, these guys are tuning 808s to this and they're getting really heavy and they do these really spacey heavy breakdowns where I'm like, this is fucking insanely heavy. Like, I <laughs> yeah. love this. So I've, I've actually been following the guys for a while. I want to see them live. Yeah, um, same. I think they were, they've been, we've been playing a lot of extreme metal festivals in Europe lately and like, they were like on the off day where I couldn't see them, but I really want to see those guys. Oh, no, they, I definitely want to see them too. But uh, if you dig them, I'd totally recommend Vilgiarta. It's like, it's not as heavy, it's more progressive. But it's the mm -hmm. same you kind know of what? thing. There's so much dog. Like I think, I think you're good. Like you. Know, so much dog, have, dude. Oh I, yeah, sorry. No, That's no, no, sorry. no. It's internal term. Yeah. No, no, no. I, uh, I uh, watched your interview on Re Revolver where you were talking about uh, so much dog. You're yeah, uh, the Simpsons uh, reference, your, right? Yeah. So for yeah, for your <laughs> listeners, yeah, for your listeners, uh, when we say heavy, we don't say heavy internally because we have a stupid lingo, but we say dog, <laughs> and the reason why is that dog is a uh, well, it's from the Simpsons. Where they uh, they drink the red tick beer and he goes needs more dog, so we'll say that if something's not heavy enough. Like, needs more dog, but the reason why we use dog instead of heavy is because a lot of people heavy means something specific, mm -hmm. and it has to be guitar. We're in search of heaviness all over, so a really a transient, a crazy transient on a snare drum or a really big kick that's got a lot of dog, even though it's not chun chun and uh, but a chun chun also has dog. So just dog all around. So if any something has more dog. <laughs> <laughs> needs more dog. more dog. I think that's the best. It's, it's a, yeah, it's it's a more um, <laughs> all encompassing heavy term is dog. It's funny because I and, love I love that uh, skit or that bit. Oh yeah, it's great. But you're always like, oh, let's dude, let's dog this thing up, or it's like, or something we hit something like you know, him is a breath like, fuck, that's a lot of dog. That's, what I'm saying. <laughs> that's <laughs> like, a whole lot of dog, dude. Yeah, um, I guess uh, kind of moving on a little bit. Uh, I have another point about uh, just talking about how your music is all like you know. I find it super interesting. Uh, your marketing. I find is actually really interesting too. You know, from memes to interesting merch ideas like butt plugs. <laughs> like, yeah, that's uh, respond to the fans. You know, now, now where I saw things ending up, but if, 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 if they want it, we're gonna make it. You know. Well, okay. How did that come to be? I gotta know about the butt plug story. You know, it's just, it's this running thing where we make a uh, an April Fool's joke, and everyone likes the April Fool's joke and doesn't get an April Fool's joke, and then every day they start hitting you up all day, like, where the fuck is this April Fool's joke? Uh, at some point, you're like, well. Uh, Leaving money on the table. We got to make this. So, like, you know, we had someone made this April Fool's joke. They're like, ah, oh, feel nothing condom. And so uh, Joe, who I do all this <laughs> stuff with, uh, he he made this feel nothing condom, uh, you know, Photoshop. Ha ha. April Fool's. No one gets a joke all day. Well, how do I get the condom? How do I get the condom? I just want the condom. Condom, condom, condom. We're like, fuck. All right. This condom is, is too hot. We got to get the condom. This condom is so fucking popular. We put it in all our orders. We bring in all the shows. Always free. We're spending thousands of dollars on these fucking condoms you know cause you, but you can you can order them if you order like forty thousand at a time they come as just massive box and you get them cheaper so we have this these condoms up the yin yang <laughs> and then next year it's like oh what if uh a butt plug ha <laughs> that's pretty funny it's like where is this butt plug no one even gets this a joke uh, do kids not even do april fools anymore maybe that's it so and wait like, that, i didn't realize that was an april fools joke i thought that was see, a legitimate if you go back to the original post, it just it's April first and it's a butt plug. And then as a joke, we said it cost sixty nine dollars. And you go to websites, it's sold out. And they're like, dude, it's sold out in five minutes. I gotta get it. Are you gonna get more butt plugs? I'm like, ah, April, not even working. So finally, you know, the tour we did earlier this year, we found this. We found these two companies, and like, we went on tour with five hundred butt plugs. You know, and it's like, <laughs> sold a lot of fucking butt plugs. Like there is demand. We're gonna have to make more butt plugs. You know, I didn't think I thought we sell like five. You know, it's, it's kind of a pretty novelty item. But I love it when it's like a guy and his 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 uh, wife or girlfriend, and she's like, "Honey," and he's like, ah, uh, 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 uh. <laughs> I, "I think you really tapped into a cool market there." Seriously, like, um, 
you're not the only one. There's actually a band called, uh, you know, Electric Cowboy. They're like, oh, uh, those, those those guys are some funny dudes. Yeah, they're funny, yeah. and they uh, actually sold a vibrator. Actually, it's a little more, uh, a little bit more expensive. Yeah, yeah, but uh, I think there's a weird market for you know maybe people don't want shirts and butt plugs. People and love other. novelty items, you know. I guess you know Rammstein did the dildos. Oh, true. Um, of course they would. Uh, and I think Ghost did a did a dildo at some point, but uh-huh. I couldn't think of anyone who'd done a butt plug. Yeah, there you go. But You're, also, it was you know it's mostly joke. But now it's it's just people just love it. So. You're uh, the uh, butt plug innovator in the music <laughs> space. I don't know if this should really catch on. My actual, <laughs> you, know, like, you know, we sell these the silicone butt plugs fiber. We sell these metal butt plugs. If someone hated you at the show and they threw this on my head, you could fucking kill me. Like if you could really just boom, like true, dead. yeah, 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 yeah. So I'm like, I'm like, I don't want to get dime bagged by a fucking butt plug, and that's my fucking eulogy. Like, eulogy is terrible. <laughs> that's how you go. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be horrible. I hope I don't give anyone fucking idea here. Yeah, yeah, maybe you should. Yeah, your fans yeah, would yeah. never do that, okay? But no, but hey, who knows? I could be at the wrong wrong session. You know, we've been selling these these butt plugs wouldn't pass a metal detector. You know, true. But uh, you might want to edit that that part. Edit that. <laughs> 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 but if you did get hit with one, at least it could make for some uh, good publicity. Dude, you know, loud wire. You would you'd fucking die. Yeah. Revolver would pick that up too. Yeah, yeah. I'd just be like. <laughs> In a chair, <laughs> I'll be terrible. All right. Well, okay. To stay focus on the the marketing topic, like, what have you done differently for this album as opposed to other records in terms of marketing? Uh, you know, I think the the marketing that like the world, like we've been kept trucking with what we've done since the collab, since the we've sort of had this, you know, since we entered Discord, since we, the um, the pandemic, where we started being so much more online focused and throwing those shit out because we were stuck at home, and sort of this culture has been created. So I don't know, trying to take things a little bit farther. You know, we did we during the pandemic and all that. We didn't really shoot real music videos. We did like pretty ambitious music video. I don't know if you, the shamed one. I, I went to Dragon Con and Anime Expo. You should check okay. It out. Yeah, yeah. Um, What's it called? And, uh, it's a shame. It's the music video for the shame song. Oh, but, so wait, do you, are you talking about a music video or a movie? Oh, music video. Sorry, music video. I said it's oh, like okay. a little short film. Yeah. You can see the rest of the band. That's but, why um, I was. No, I reacted to it. The you. Just, oh, nice. Oh, nice. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to think, I don't know, different, I don't know if there's anything crazy different, like we're, uh, oh, actually, you know, we've been doing, we've actually been flying around and doing listening parties, we did one in LA and Das Bunker, we did one at El Real Under, which are like the two killer goth clubs in each city, um, okay. and just basically they've been doing parties, and on the Sleep Token Tour, we're just going to be doing these, like, like a free after party, where you can just hang with the band, and like, that's it, like, there's not really much to it, like, going, like um, it's, it's kind of a thing, I know a lot of metal bands are like, meet and greet, meet and greet, VIP package, we're really want to tell everyone, like, Meet and greet is always free. You can fucking call me anytime. Uh, we give up my phone number. Like you can see me at the show anytime. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so free, it's your you know? phone number that's always on these yeah. uh, videos and stuff. Okay. Yeah. So um, <laughs> you know the uh, we've always been that way, but uh, I think people, especially a lot of people from the heavy world, really love that because it's something that people pay a lot of money for, and it's like, dude, I'm the house. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm I'm early at the venue. I got I don't have shit to do. You know. Yeah, it's weird. There's a uh, definite w- ways that you can monetize so much more, but you're just. Oh, I get it, and it's good. I mean, obviously, it's where you make a lot of money. It's just we've just never had. You know, we came from such a DIY scene, and you can call me, and I talk. You can, I mean, I'm just like I'm really just very available. I'm just I'm on Discord all day. So, uh, why not? It's a good selling point. You know, come to the show because people really want to. People really want the record signed. People do want to meet you. People do want that photo. Who am I to resist? Well, you know? that's exactly why your Discord and the the fan base is as good as they are right instead of trying to milk every dollar out of your fans you're literally just genuinely excited to hang out with them and talk to them yeah yeah no i get it if you're a huge artist that would not be possible so we are in this fully locked zone where it's totally fine uh now if i have to turn off my number that's a good problem for me but yeah uh you know now and for the foreseeable future i don't see why it should be an issue but even still like i've like um you know we've opened for huge bands and like it's a massive arena, and I'll just like get a text. I'll just go out and talk to you know, hang out with whoever or whatever festival. I'm always walking around the festival, you know. Yeah, well, the sleep token shows are going to be some big ones too. And um, you know, we were talking about collaborations and and with artists. I think sleep token, if there was a way that you could collaborate with them, I think would be amazing. Oh, I, I'd love to. I just wouldn't don't be too presumptuous, you know. Uh, but uh, we, we, you know, hopefully, hopefully they enjoy 
I hope they obviously I hope they like the music and maybe get along in the tour and they'd be into it. That'd be great. Not for me yeah. to say, but yeah, yeah, you know. And also, a lot of people, you know, it's kind of a. I totally understand if people don't want to do a collaboration because of how they put their music, and it is also it's it's kind of a math problem when you kind of stick the you know two bands together. And so, it some people we don't collaborate because we're just not sure how we do it. But yep. uh, then we'd, we'd really love to because they're also their sound is so expansive they could really do anything. We don't have to do. We could do just a totally just different kind of song. It doesn't even have to go heavy or anything. It would be great, you know. Totally, but uh, Sleep Tokens collaborated with uh, Loathe before. Oh, really? Yeah, they oh, have a. They did a vocal uh, cover of one of their songs, and it's awesome. Those guys are good friends, both from oh, the shit. UK too, right? We just we just met Loathe. We played with them at Arctangent. They're really cool guys. Yeah, I, I met them too. They're awesome, and uh, I think Loathe and Sleep Token are at the top of. Um, modern metal music right now mm -hmm. in terms of just creativity and just being a little bit genre pushing but yeah, yeah it's a it's a it's a fun time it's a fertile time i mean i'm right now this 2023 and, and moving it's like it, it definitely feels like a like an exciting time and like uh, what really what i really love and what's got me so excited about sleep token is like i just haven't seen a band go from a club to an arena in like six months in like, I don't know, 10 years or something. Like I haven't seen that in so long. It, yeah. It, you know, that's just, it's, it's amazing. I've made videos on it. It's basically like, well, I was making videos for them, you know, during the time it was happening. Cause I've been listening to them for a while now. I've always really liked their music. Um, it's basically just TikTok. The TikTok is really the reason why they went huge. And mainly because of the one part in the summoning where it turns into a, like a sexy funk section. And it, I, kind of like um rethought of like the metal space like maybe we're kind of done with heavy breakdowns and maybe like fans just want sexy music yeah, well something. there is a, there is a sort of term i don't i don't want to spill the beans like i got a term for it i'm putting on a t-shirt right now <laughs> but uh there is this uh oh fuck i'll just have to put it out immediately but uh you know there's this sort of this movement in um in sort of i guess you want to say modern metal it's like uh I think the one guy from that one pod is he wanted to call it baddie core. I'm like, that's a terrible name. It's like come metal. <laughs> this is the era of come. This is, this is come metal, you know? And uh, there's all these great, uh, you know, modern, you know, forward facing heavy groups that are like taking uh, other influences, but you know, still being heavy, but they all have this very either sort of sexual or kind of like great, you know, amazing singer kind of crooning, you know, kind of croon like a uh, thing. And it's, it's, it's cum metal, you know, and that's, uh, you know, whether it's, it's low, <laughs> bad omen, sleep token. I mean, you could even, I mean, we're kind of adjacent. You could even stick us in there if you want. Uh, yeah, fuck yeah. it. Uh, you could, uh, you could, spirit box. You can take, you can get the Totally. Like, yeah. There's a lot of, lot of all these, all these really great, uh, all these uh, groups here. Uh, they don't have to necessarily sound the same, but they, of a, a little sensuality, if you want to call it. <laughs> you <laughs> gotta, you gotta put that on a shirt immediately because I want to clip this. For yeah, 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 yeah. Clip it. Hey, I, I got. Uh, we're actually working right now. We got a hoodie because like it's for the sleep token dates. Like I'm like I got. It's like I got. I got to coin this term because like there's this new playlist on Spotify. Everyone is having the same thought. They have this allure playlist. We're on there. Sleep tokens on there. Lowe's on there. And it's the allure. And it's like a chick with putting a fucking raspberry in her mouth, all sexual. It's like sexual metal. It's like it's fucking cum metal. Like this is. <laughs> We're gonna we're gonna sell a lot of these fucking shirts. You, know? you guys are just you're just marketing geniuses over there. <laughs> you just but yeah, I've been I've been, I've been I've been I've been sitting on the term for a while, but like we're gonna unveil it for the sleep token show. So shit, maybe I need to get it out ASAP. It's way better than what I said. I think like I made it a, a tweet or something calling it like, like like sexy core or flirt core, but come yeah, metal. core. I don't want a core in there. I think it's like this better. You gotta have yeah, metal come metal yeah, is yeah, yeah. way better. Come metal's so good. Better. Also, it's like you know. It's just, it's got a lot of. <laughs> it's got a lot of pizzazz. No, in so, it. Someone said baby making metal. Which wasn't bad. This it doesn't roll yeah. off the tongue. You know. You know. Cum yeah, metal. That is, sounds like a, that sounds like a genre. Yeah, you know? it totally does. Um, dude, how do I uh, segue into <laughs> the next question? <laughs> okay, look, look. There's a. This is a really cool thing that you guys were on, and I'm sure you've answered this or talked about this a bunch on other interviews. But just for me and my followers' sake. I want to know about your time on the Eric Andre show because I thought that was so cool. I love Eric Andre and I love his show. How did that come to be? So, you know, we live in L.A. We go way back with Eric Andre uh, before he was known as Eric Andre. There was uh, we just know a lot of people in the comedy scene and just do the culture and stuff like that and uh, friends with them. So the director and producer of Eric Andre are personal friends of ours. Oh. And we are actually on the pilot episode of Eric Andre. So. Uh, they didn't air, air it. It's a, a pilot episode they did, and we play a fake indie band called the Satin Lance. And uh, BJ is actually our drummer, 
is in the Eric Andre band as the drummer. No way. And, and at the end of the pilot, like Eric fucking just tackles him, like football tackles him. <laughs> pilot got pick, the pilot got picked up. They got uh, you know, they cast all the parts and they got they got a budget and then you know they started se- uh, filming it. So that was you know we were never got to be on the air. So by season four, they're like, dude, we never had you guys on a fucking episode. And we're like, yeah, come on. And so like so they got us on the episode. We got in there, and that's why we don't really get pranked very much because like we know them. They're nice. Yeah. And uh, yeah. and and uh, and we're friends. And the cool thing was is like you know they they want people to be loose on there. So in all the green rooms, there's just open bar. There's just like ten bottles of liquor. So we're just chilling there. It's like we're just we got fucking we're just fucking hammered. On that thing. Yeah, you were guys were <laughs> like, actually hammered for we're just destroyed. Yeah, we're so <laughs> drunk. Like if you feel me talking, I just pick like slurring. Uh, and it was it was it was just a really fun time. Yeah, you, know? uh, you know that's so cool. I had no idea they had connections to Eric Andre. I know he knows about like the heavy music space. I've heard him talk about Dillinger Escape Plan and uh, he loves Avon. He went to I think he went to even Berkeley College or something like that. But yeah. he's you know, he's a very talented. Like when uh when Jake our singer first met Eric Andre, he was like holy oh hi Eric, Eric thing, and he's like oh what kind of music do you play? He's like ah oh, you know this at the time he's like oh you know kind of like a noise rock. He's like oh like this and he acapella. Uh, we have a forty five second song, second song on our first record that's just a tonal math bullshit. He recited it a cappella, front to back, perfectly. Just like, you know, he did the whole thing. And Jake's just like, whoa, all right, all right, wow, okay. All right, I guess you're familiar. <laughs> I totally believe that. He did the same thing with 43% Burnt from uh, Don't Understand. Oh, really? He, yep. did the, he, he did the breakdown yep. section perfectly. Yep. That, that's, that's Eric Andre. Yeah, I thought that was so cool, man. Um, but another thing that I wanted to talk about. Actually, this is just a totally random question, but something that I've uh, been talking with other people. But... Basically, I've heard from people that there's no such thing as a classic anymore in music. And I think it's because there's so much music today that is just it's hard for something to really stand the test of time. Do you think that's true that there can't be a classic anymore in the modern age or is it is there still such a thing as a classic? Uh, it, it is possible, uh, but I'll tell you, tech and everyone around it is doing their damnedest to make it impossible and all the criticisms i say are not wrong you know it is you know even that right now record labels like they're not really sure what to do it's very strange like like you know it's not even hit focused right now you know they used to be a record label would be like hey guys got to give us a hit and we can get it here and get big it's like that's not even you could write a great song right now and like i don't know if that would happen like there's so many just other weird factors no one can predict what can make a song react on tiktok which is like the mtv our time but it has a computer is kind of making the decision and then the people inspired to kind of make the decision and you know they're pulling which is you know that's the cool thing actually those here's the thing for all the negatives about the time i don't want to complain it is an exciting time right now and it is fertile and i'm super pumped that sleep token can get huge off the outro of a fucking seven minute song yeah, <laughs> like, know, right? that is so fucking weird and it's kind of like there's all these moments that are happening too like during the soundcloud era like 2019 when XXX and Tacion and Lil Peep and all these bands are getting huge, when XXX Tacion's song that uh, "Fuck with Me" that song was huge. I'm like, this is the equivalent of like the Germs in like 1980 being the number one song in America. Like it's like a punk, insane kid just getting huge, and like that's what's possible now. So I don't want to poo poo everything because it's a it is a really cool time. Music can explode and reach a lot of people, and people can hear it. And extremely uncommercial music, or what strange music, or just really specific music, can get very big. So I can't say it's all bad, but yes, it is. I we are all we definitely definitely miss a monoculture hit songs that everyone knows this record that this is we would love some ten you know temple bands. However, whereas before, I think everyone in the heavy space was like, "What are we gonna do? We're not gonna have any headliners in like ten years, or like you know we're like or like we can see the end. Everyone's gonna die." It's like. We're gonna have we're having some headliners right now. People are getting big, and it's they have new sounds, and it's just like, huh, what's going on? It's it's interesting, you know. Yeah, it's true. There, there's it's funny that you point out about labels not knowing what's going to take off too. And uh, again, it's a lot of the TikTok thing, and it's true. That, like it's the modern MTV in a way. Yeah, uh, and it's and it's very bizarre. It's like, hey, this intro of or an old song can get huge, or it just it's just totally random. Deftones. To Deftones yes. is getting like even bigger now. Way bigger than they ever been. It's yeah. like, and it's like the hottest band for kids. It's like, how'd you do that? It's like, <laughs> so you know, it's really, it's it's really. It also, I do like this phenomenon too. When we talk about old, uh, older bands, is like, everyone has the data now. So, let's say if it was like the two thousands or late nineties or something, some classic old metal band when they make the new album, they would try and keep up the trends, and it would be really horrible and out of touch, and everyone laugh at it, and they didn't like it. Now we have the data. 
and everyone knows what your favorite songs are. So like, like there's a Jewish Priest put an album I think like 2018 or something. It's like Firepower. It's fucking incredible. <laughs> it's got some of my favorite no, songs. There's yeah, it yeah. And it's like a new like that sentence would have not been possible. You couldn't think of a classic band having a good record usually. There's there's a few rare instances, but usually past the the heyday, it's not possible in in any kind of rock music, and it actually weirdly is. Or like the fucking Scorpions album, it's pretty fucking good. Like, <laughs> like this new song where I'm like, this sounds great because they're looking at Spotify and they're like, hey, everyone likes these songs best. Why don't we try to write one like that? You know, True, and it's not them trying yeah, yeah. to work with some new producer and do something that is totally alien to them that they don't even believe in. So it, it is it is uh, it is a very very wild west strange time of music i don't know what's going to happen i am worried <clears throat> like most people but i'm also kind of enjoying the the ride i'm yeah. enjoying this uh fucking haunted house just anything can happen right now <laughs> kind of it's time and it's, and it's been good for us so i can't truly complain you know absolutely it's like algorithm based it's database so you look at the numbers see what's working well um but another thing that's kind of a hot topic lately and is like ai the use of AI to help with tools helps with writer's block, especially when it comes to lyrics using chat GPT. I feel like yeah. you, your band is like super interesting because I feel like you'd meme the shit out of it or something. But yeah, well, you know, I just I've looked into and obviously everyone, you know, what even all the streaming services, what they want to do with AI is the stuff of your nightmares. It is terrible. They do want to just be churning out, you know, endless shit of like a fucking mood playlist. That's the dream, the end goal to replace the artist. But uh, at least for the mo for the part now, I there I download a lot of AI tools, try to use this record, not very useful. Um, but oh. I can see them being useful in the future. Um, one of the coolest things I got was this is you know there's huge innovations in like removing sounds from stuff. It's just like I was able like oh I can pull this you know weird little transient out of this other thing to use. But pulling it out, it still had all kinds of like wispy underwater sounds. The quality was all fucked up, so I couldn't really actually use it. But in theory, that's crazy, and that would be great to use. Um, little stuff to modify drum patterns. There's just the kind of funny thing is like, when it comes to music, music really isn't that, when you really break it down, like not that complicated so, and, or that hard. So of course, a computer could just, you know, could master that easily. But it's also like, that technology is already here because you can get a splice membership and just pull incredible pre-made loops of music already. And they're already made for you and you're totally copyright free and they cost like five bucks. Yeah. And you can have a track in four seconds and it's amazing. And it's like harder work and requires like trillions of dollars of servers to like generate you one that you can't edit of that where you could just go on fucking splice and be like, and, and, and also be a lot more expressive and creative than you like typing in a word prompt describing of the sound you'd like. So I guess for right now, obviously in the future, it kind of sucks. <laughs> and, and the technology to have a song written for you is already here. And it like if you move to L.A., if you're like a beautiful person and want to be in music, you can get free sessions all day of incredibly talented people in L.A. who will work with you to write songs for you. And you can just describe to them what you want. And like they'll do it for free. They just get a percentage of your song. So the technology is already here for, I guess, for a lot of uh, what we'd imagine uh, that we'd hope uh, AI can do. And we definitely don't want more music. We've got 100 songs out a day on Spotify. No one's listening to any of it. So uh, there was <laughs> one other thing I did want to bring up on this topic, though. Uh, and I totally, totally lost my train of thought. Oh, well. No, I mean, don't got it like AI tools and how uh, you can take out stuff. Oh, well, there's this new thing um, there. I don't know. Uh, there, there are there are some things I look into. There's this AI tool that can turn uh, random sounds into like a soft synth, which is really cool. That's something we would totally use. I mean, a lot of stuff we did on this record, like I don't know if you got to hear the whole record, like a lot of stuff we have is like we have the sound input is a guy, you know, we had a chugging, you know, guitar palm muted. But we use 100% none of that sound, and it's triggering other sounds that we've created to do this like fucking crazy synth sound doing a guitar sound. I don't okay. think that counts as AI, but it's a really great plugin. You know, so we're always looking for new shit. If there's a new tool, I want it. So I've been trying to find this AI stuff. I'm like, oh wow, is this going to be like the next level thing? I just haven't got anything yet. That's all. That's why I figured like you're one of the best people to talk to on my podcast in terms of like you know AI and technology because you guys are always. Um, I feel like ahead of the curve in terms of just unique sounds and some music and using whatever programs you can. Like I think I saw a video. I don't. I don't blow. Uh, I wouldn't. Well, we're not. I don't know for that <laughs> on the cutting. But yeah. But yeah. But we're trying. How about that? You know. 
for for like the the music that I cover on my channel yeah, yeah. specifically, I guess because well that's not the that's not necessarily true because a lot of the bands in metal are always using you know drum programs and um, even like uh, guitars. Uh, what I find funny is like if they actually use chat GPT, which I don't think they would. Actually, oh, no, this is what I was trying to say. Sorry. Okay. Is the AI tech incredible? Yes. Will it change society? I'm sure. And it, then the future is going to be really weird. But here's the thing with AI is that the thing with a lot of this shit, people are selling you an investment opportunity. They are fucking on a certain level, all this shit, they're fucking scamming you. You know what it's like when you get crypto, when you get fucking AI, when you get any of these crazes that are like, you got to get in now, give me your fucking money. They are over promising. You know, when if you go on Twitter and read all the stuff a, all day, they're like, AI just did this, AI just did this. A lot of that shit, they're completely fucking lying. It does not do that. And it can't oh, yeah? do that yet. It is theoretically able to and will possibly one day, but it can't. It's like AI can write a script and they got the shit in Hollywood. They're like, we're going to replace all your writers with AI. It's like they might one day, but it actually can't write a script. It can for about four pages and then it can't reference what happened before. Because it's fucking complicated and it's not conscious. So you can get 400 pages, but every like X amount of pages that it could runs out of its whatever it's so it's just this complete fucking nonsense. Like it's yeah. not it can't reference earlier events and stay internally consistent. And there's all this stuff. It's so complicated and so out of like that we can't even perceive. It just does these like hallucinations they call them, or just does fucking insane shit, and no one knows how they got there. So it's like to actually use it, being like I, the Hollywood producers, they heard this like we all did. And we're like, this is it. They didn't, no one's actually tried it. So, like, you just think that you just generate script with some generic idea, hand this generic script to a writer and be like, clean this up. It would be, it would be easier just to write it from scratch because it would just be total fucking nonsense. What ChatGPT was amazing at is like, you're a kid in high school and you have to do some bullshit homework that they're not expecting much of you anyway. And it's just generic and they can just clean up your grammar or clean it up for you or just give you a generic essay that you can turn in and get a fucking B, you know? And that's, it's amazing for that. And that's what's funny. It's like ChatGPT, it's like, People less people are using it now. People are just like aren't really finding stuff to use it on, and they're like losing like a million a month because they have to run fucking trillions and trillions and trillions and trillions of servers. So when it comes to music and a lot of this stuff, like there are tons of people who will just work for free for anything. Like you could buy beats, mm. you can go on YouTube and just. I, I know so many great musicians now where they just browse YouTube for beats a kid made, and they give the kid five hundred bucks, and they own the beat, and then they sing on it. And that song, I'm not going to tell you song. That song has like fucking 500 million plays on Spotify. And it's a great song. So it's like, you know, the this huge infrastructure and trillions of dollars and like scrub chat should be using this stuff to generate it. And you create like these 80 steps of making it hard. All my friends who've done AI art, that's pretty impressive. They've had to work their ass off to get it to work. One day it will probably work. It's probably amazing for backgrounds of video games. But, you know, an RPG, you know, why is Dark Souls so fucking brilliant? A guy fucking tweaked every little thing. You know, Baldur's Gate 3 is so amazing. There's not even random encounters in Baldur's Gate 3. It's all just tweaked for every little moment. If it was just a procedurally generated, it would not be better. It's not, you'll just want more crap. Like, so someone's got to pay attention on some level. I I am excited about AI tools that will make, that will allow us to do new stuff in music. And there's stuff that we're imagining that I, presumably AI will be able to do soon. And I'm looking forward to that. But for right now, uh, I have this. Don't invest in any AI startups. <laughs> Just <laughs> don't don't do that right now. Yeah. Save your money. I think you answered it perfectly. That was a great answer. Like, uh, have you seen? Speaking of like just shitty AI, have you seen that subreddit? where it's basically them just asking their own questions or their own topics and comments just feeding off it. And oh, I bet. I mean, I mean, it is crazy. Like Dolly, like these image generators are fucking bananas. Oh, They're the amazing. A you know, you but I was like, whenever I try to do something, I'm like, oh. I'm like, health, logo, make it Warhammer 40K. It's like, cannot do it. I'm like, God damn it. Like, I just said, I want something specific. <laughs> well, how do you feel about, like, AI art? Because that's pretty good. Like, it, most of the other stuff you're talking about is still not fully developed for sure. But, like, AI art is a little bit more subjective where they can just pop something out. It's super fun. Yeah, I mean, uh, I'm sure, like, you know, I'm getting some, there's some great memes have come up. Um, and people are usually getting the image to make the meme. I'm a fan of memes, but yeah, I, I haven't like, uh, I've seen a few album covers that come in that air generator where you're like, mm, mm. but, uh, I, I mean, it, it can definitely do some wild shit. It's, it is crazy what it can do. Like it, like the, and it's, it's getting better. So yeah, of course, is this scary? Yes, it is. But, uh, I haven't been able to use it even yet. <laughs> so we can't, cause we were, I was like, it's really hard for us to create, to have a health art. And it's like kind of in the similar style. I'm like, could we generate more art? Is this, the, is this the future? And we're like, nope, no, nope, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> There's this one guy that um, 
he basically coded a bunch of like riffs and drum patterns into this program uh-huh. and it spits out like infinite like hours of music and he put like a youtube video it was like 24 hours of gent metal music and yes you know, yeah so, so sometimes I, I, you saw it no yeah i did but also this is a thing this is hilarious because like you know we're like we're trying to, i was like you know like oh metal you know most metal riffs are kind of based on the same thing i'm like are are there just people generating these riffs like should i find a great one and i was just listening i was like no, oh, this is this is so much work. Like you're just better off. <laughs> you just rip off one, or just ask someone to do, write you one. You know. Totally, but I remember looking at that video, and like, there's a lot of like n- decent, like I don't know. You can tell that it's kind of like cheap sounding riffs, but there's certain times where like that's a cool sounding melody. There's not, there's like oh, certain definitely, little definitely. moments, and that's where I think like AI could be a, a cool tool for writer's block in case like how do I move from true. This uh, but you know, it's a you know, it's a great great tool for you musicians out there. Uh, ripping someone off. <laughs> There is endless great fucking music that you love that you could be inspired by and do something very original by the time you're done with it or when you change it. And there's a lot of great songs you love, especially in the heavy space where it's the other songs slowed down in Mm -hmm. a different key, you know, like some Mm -hmm. of your favorite ones and you can put them and you're like, oh, shit. And you can write it totally. It's like, you know, just being a, a conscious, creative person. There is a plethora of stuff, you know, everywhere. So that's the really funny thing about AI. It's like it's kind of like when you're of crypto and you're like, this crypto is insane and it can change all of this. Uh, so we're gonna have this NFT and this really complicated system to to use the crypto. And maybe it's a video game. It's like, why don't you just have the video game and not have the crypto? It's like, yeah. oh, it can do payments. It's like Visa can do pay- money's already digital. <laughs> why is this so fucking complicated? Why do I need this goddamn like USB? This stupid code. It's like we're like we're like we're trying to play with the toy you know or you can just you can just do as it is you know or it's like it's our vape it's like smoke a cigarette fuck it <laughs> you know? it's true like i don't know I, I i think it's fascinating but i have no idea what the future is going to be like but I, I definitely agree with you that it's all yeah I don't, please don't yeah don't quote me on too much because i have a habit of being uh pretty much like everyone completely terrible at predicting the future you know oh you sound pretty accurate at the moment but who knows but Speaking of ripping off, can I ask you who your the main band is that you take a lot of ideas from? Uh, no, we, we don't, there's not main band. We, you know, we uh we listen to all kinds of stuff. Like we're we're really influenced by a lot of stuff to just new music that comes out or like random shit you hear in like a pop song. But like, uh, like right now, I I'm really inspired by this new music out of Brazil that is so bizarre. <laughs> I don't What's even know called? how to integrate it, but I want to copy some of these techniques. Um, because it, it's called it, it. I think it's like a, it's a continuation of Brazil. They call Brazil funk, I think, but um. Like there's a ton of these songs like this, and there's a song you can look up. I've been telling everyone in interviews. It's called Set Da GM, and I love it because it's like you got to watch the music video too. It's like a the mix is so wrong, it's completely avant garde, and it sounds like fucking Black Dice, which is this uh, super uh, you know uh, band that we were influenced by. This incredibly uh, experimental, weird noise group. But it's in this like really fun uh, like context, and there's girls twerking to it. But like there's not really a beat in the, in the traditional sense. And if the lyrics, uh, my Brazilian friends are translating, it's like it's just like a looping thing about how he's gonna fuck you in the ass or something like that. And it's like when you hear the drop, if you're drinking water, you will spit it out. It's just like cult really goes against like all your previous notions of what a mix would be in music, and like it's incredibly avant garde. And there's tons of music like it, and it's got these bizarre <laughs> drops that are so weird. <laughs> You know, and uh, there's definitely a way, you know, like I, I, we like being uh, influenced by a lot of really abstract ideas in music. So even when you're copying something, by the time it gets to you, it's just it doesn't even have any um, there's no resemblance. You're just you're just kind of copy the technique and or there's just or there's just certain genres of music. We've actually intentionally tried to copy in the records like Death Magic. We're copy, we put Juke, you know, Juke. Uh, juke uh, was incredibly underground, super cool movement really innovative we just put that juke rhythm we wanted that in there on this new album we have funk you know funk has influence we have oh funk, yeah uh, we have funk hats we have some funk stuff in there i mean there's obviously now if you listen to rat wars at home there's some very obvious moments where it's very clear who we're ripping off but those are the, the more normal things uh, usually we get inspired in the uh the the more abstract ideas you know okay that makes sense and i'm just looking at the comments for set dad gm or whatever and people are saying this kind of music genuinely strays from all modern music conventions. It's kind of insane. Someone else, this is the highest state music has ever reached. Someone else, l- literally just, the most boundary pushing music. It's just the most avant-garde thing I've heard lately. And it's party music. And it's fucking bizarre. 
Oh man, I'm actually tempted to <laughs> film a reaction video. Dude, it, it, it makes it so fucked. It's just fucking amazing. Like, like I remember playing. Everyone I played it for, they're like, "What? <laughs> it's just so wrong." Tight. No way. That's so cool. <laughs> it's fucking tight. It's not gonna be what you think it is, though. Like, because I bet I don't know what you're imagining right now. It's like it's just. I'm. It's, I'm it's, yeah. It's I'm just like, um. It's just reggaeton, really cool. almost like DJ funk music with a weird tone or something. That's what I'm thinking right now. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, you'll see it. But oh, there's so, there's so many great ones. You know, like uh, people have written, people have been talking about this on the internet for a while. I think the only reason why it hasn't reached more people is just, it's just so weird. Like it can't really spread. Like no pop star hearing this is gonna want to like you know take the sound and put it in their new song. Uh, but we would. It's hard know? to say too, right? Like maybe if uh, it, a part blew up on TikTok and someone used it for like, I'm actually kind of shocked this hasn't blown up on TikTok because if you put the drops from the song on TikTok it is just like what and you could do and when I watch the music videos like it's so I'm like where Brazil just seems so avant-garde it's like these cool moody music videos all these like hot young people like twisting a fucking like a stick on fire and they're dancing and fucking twerking to like a non-beat and then the drop comes and you're like what the hell was that <laughs> Fucking they tight. could they could hit up some influencers or something on TikTok and probably yeah yeah I'm, I, there's up. a bit of a language barrier but I'm that's what I'm kind of wondering because I was like fuck should I just hit up on these guys like would they do a song with us <laughs> yeah <laughs> hit up and then you guys hit up some influencer on TikTok and it, it yeah, goes yeah. Fucking hey you're viral. an influencer yeah but I can't shake my ass and nobody yeah, yeah. wants to see that too yeah, you never know there's yeah who knows there's a market there's, there's a market economy, who knows yeah people have asked for uh, my feet actually and I can't tell if they're joking or not. Now it's getting a little bit worrisome, uh, but, but I digress. <laughs> if you weren't another question I got for you, if you weren't doing music, what would you be doing? Uh, I, you know, originally uh, I went to LA to, I went to this really bullshit fly by night film school. And then uh, I really needed a job after, and I was working at guitar center. And that's where I met Jake. And I really wanted for, to do a music for a short time to join the local scene. This really cool, this avant-garde scene that we started in uh, yeah. around the smell. And uh, we just, we didn't see us having any sort of success. So that the fact that we got like hype and all these like opportunities off our first album, it was sort of like a moment like, Hey, having any success is so rare. And as a lottery of sorts, even though how matter how small is, I'm like, I don't want to look get forced in the mouth. Let's just keep going. So I guess if we had never done the band, I would probably like a lot of my other friends where I'm like, I'm just like directing uh, music videos and commercials right now, trying to make a movie. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it could have worked out. Who knows? But that would have been cool. But you know, times have also changed too. Like movies aren't really, culturally what they were then uh, i think right now let's say the band ended tomorrow i would immediately go into uh video games and um probably make it some sort of indie game of some kind or just trying to find a job with someone but now with unreal engine 5 it's really turning into like it's like ableton like where you can just like anyone can make a record at home you can make a video game at home right now and it'll look incredible so it'd be pretty hard for me not to do that you know true but will it play incredible have you heard about this uh what? horror game called stray souls I maybe you gotta tell me is this one like crazy scary no it's like a total Silent Hill uh, ripoff but um, basically it, it looked kind of cool for a while like the demos back in the day and uh, the graphics were incredible because they're just using assets from Unreal Engine 5 and it just looks really good the game finally came out and it's just total garbage it's apparently like oh. you gotta play it because <laughs> it's so hilariously bad that's the only oh, reason shit. to play okay. it okay that's some shit I would do in stream uh yeah, do like indie games. Yeah, no, indie games are great. Okay, well, this this is uh, going to segue into the final part of the podcast because I don't want to take too much of your time up. I know you said you had like a barbecue, but you know, I oh just yeah, some... I, I, we're we're good. We're we're fine. I'm gonna okay. start salting some meat or something in like an hour or something. <laughs> okay, cool. Well, I just got some easy questions, but since we were just talking about video games, what are uh, your top three games? Oh, fuck, that's really hard. Um, I do I do get asked this question a lot. So, uh, most important games for me, I guess, growing like the Baldur's Gate one and two, and then now I'm playing three, which is just incredible. So, and Dragon Age Origins, they're all kind of the same game. This like this top down. Oh, RPG is it? Series RPG. I mean, not really, but like it's the same style. They're all based around this this thing, this Baldur's Gate, uh, like isometric, like serious RPG system. I've uh, heard the name before, but now Baldur's Gate three is getting thrown. Just around play the new one. Everywhere. It's totally standalone. Um, it's like it's one of the greatest RPGs ever, and I'm only I don't know, I'm thinking I'm not even half through. But you know, you just know it's 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 bananas. Really, One it's of the so greatest bananas. RPGs ever? Period. I mean, you didn't even. I don't know. Like, I don't know if you played. It is turn based. I don't know if you're gonna like that, but it's like it I love the old, the old, the old JRPGs. It's it's different. It plays like these Baldur's Gate games, but it's fully turn based. It uses the current D and D rules. Um, it's very tactical. 
Uh, you're just like when you when you go fights, but it's it's a blast. But what's really mind blowing about it is the quality. Every single NPC in the game is a fully acted, voiced character, what? like hundred percent. And then every weird option you could do within the D D rule set, you basically can do. So if you like, if there's a corpse and you just talk to the corpse with the spell, it's a fully voiced dialogue thing you can go through. Or like if you talk to animals, any pigeon, any animal you see is a fully voiced character <laughs> they'll talk to you. And you can do all these crazy choices of shit. You can do any way, which way to, to beat the adventure. You can have an unbeatable boss. You could just push off a fucking cliff and they just die immediately. And it's like the most satisfying thing in the world. And they can do it to you. So much you detail just, and uh, attention to detail. And just it's just freedom. fucking bananas. It is so bananas. It's just, it, it's so, uh, that's that's great video games to me. It's just, it, it, it's so uh, invigorating. And the dialogue, the characters, like, I don't know if you liked Dragon Age Origins or it's like, you have these uh, party members that are really great characters. And you can have like a romance or like they don't like each other. It's just, it's just so immersive. Like, you know, play that all night. I've and seen, then it, yeah, it's 10 out of 10 across the board. I didn't know. I didn't know that. I thought it was just like a, a fad game of people talking about it. No, it'll it'll blow your dick off. I highly recommend it if you like like really serious RPGs. Um, I'm Matt. I mean, I just I love RPGs. Probably is my favorites, but um, I'm super into I you know the, anything from software from you know Demon Souls. You got a tattoo, into, right? So like yeah. it's like, come on, they're the it, it's like those are the most I don't know the most innovative like life changing the best fucking games, the artistry, everything about them. And then, uh, so. Any one of those you can put up there, really. And then, uh, I don't know, like Streets of Rage Two or something. <laughs> like Doom yeah. Eternal. I, I love beat the beat 'em up games. From like that, that's really old. I don't know. There's so many great. Uh, there's a lot of great games. I, I love the the Bioware, the 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 good the good Bioware era too. You know, like the Mass Effect. And I'm trying to look at my game game list here. Yeah, you love your RPGs. Sounds yeah, like. yeah, yeah. That, those are in terms of the deepest emotional connection. Definitely the RPGs. Uh, but you know, obviously, I like shooters and other types types of games, of course. But yeah, no, me is like uh, I have more basic answers, more like a uh, Ocarina of Time, Final Fantasy VII. That's RPG. Um, Those are great. Those are great games. Metal Gear, I fucking love the Metal Gear games. All oh, classics, classics. Yeah, that's. I grew up with like a PS One and like N sixty four, so the, those are my go to. I mean, PS One was the shit. I mean, uh, you know, Resident Evil. The first Classic. one that was like so mind blowing. Actually, the Silent Hill one and two were so awesome back then too. Silent Hill two, I think, is still one of the best games ever. I was excited for this a remake, but apparently, was like, don't don't be excited. Oh no! Do you watch the trailer for it? Uh, no, I didn't. I yeah, usually looks, don't like to. If it's something I'm gonna see, I just I don't even like to watch the trailer. I can go blind, you know. Yeah, good call because the trailer, the facial animations, they just look wacky. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they got the whole feel of the game wrong, in my opinion. So I, they haven't announced anything in a whole year, and I think um, they got too much backlash from that one trailer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I kind of want to do, I bet on PC, you can probably like download the original with like some guys modded it to play better or something like that, and you can play Silent Hill 2. Because I, I do want to do that. Yeah, totally. Um, okay, you were talking about movies earlier. Uh, top three favorite movies. Casino. Barry oh, Lyndon. Casino. Uh, Casino, Barry Lyndon. I, I can say Casino or Goodfellas, but I, sometimes when I'm on, honest, I think a Casino is like a movie I can just watch anytime. Uh, Barry Lyndon is it got I'll, often I say is my number one. Um, so many. Uh, the top ten. I mean, the the, the Doors, JFK. Interesting Heat. picks. Heat. Um, Heat's good. I. It's funny that you literally just named two movies that are like on my top. 10 lists of movies to watch because um casino like i'm trying to i went through like a whole mafia phase of watching like trying to watch all the robert de niro and al pacino movies and i still haven't oh, seen yeah. heat or casino yet you haven't seen heat or casino i watched like the first 15 minutes i'm like damn oh, this movie's man. like three hours long i gotta go to bed oh, dude, these, those these, those are the most like whatever at the rest of the day just that's you gotta you gotta just watch them probably after gonna, this podcast man I got you, you got it there's there's so there's so so it's like uh both came out the same year, actually, which is crazy. Um, they'll blow your fucking dick off. They're just like the most <laughs> incredible movies. Heat, Heat is uh, is like the best action movie ever made. It's like an action drama. It's super Hollywood, but it's just fucking brilliant. And then the Casino, uh, uh, Casino is like you know might be my favorite movie ever. It just, it just, uh, just, uh, it just feels so good. It, and it's a, uh, it, it's such a, it's it's basically Goodfellas too in a lot of ways. It's is really it? brilliant. But you like you see Goodfellas at least. I hope. Well, yeah, I saw it recently because like, how have I not seen this movie yet? So I watched yeah. Goodfellas like last year, I think, and blown away. I loved it. 
yeah, it's great. So hey, it's it's kind of it's kind of like good. I mean, you, I mean, you should like. Sounds like you're missing a lot of the classic like dude movies. Like, have you seen Scarface? Yep. Yeah, no, 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 that's the same time period. I didn't watch Scarface. Like, I played oh, you, Grand Theft Auto watch, Vice City, so I felt like I gotta watch Scarface. Well, did I did. Scarf- oh, you did it. Great. You know, yeah. there's a Scarface too. Like, there's kind of a casino, sort of a two. It's like a spiritual sequel. It's uh, Carlito's Way. It's an awesome movie too. Oh yeah, it's amazing. Uh, no, great. I think. But put that later in the list. You got you got to watch Heat. You got to watch Casino. Um, you got to watch all the. I mean, I hope you watch all the. See you know, all the Kubricks. Um, I haven't watched all of them, but I. You know the big, the big ones, uh, Coen Brothers. You know, like AFI is top one hundred movies. See all those yeah. movies. You know, see all the those those lists are not stupid. Movies like nineties and later is usually like most movies I watch. Mm-hmm. So just kind of like how I grew up with, but like Stanley Kubrick, like you were just talking about this older movie that he did. Uh, Barry, Barry Lyndon Barry. is probably my personal favorite. I mean, if you haven't seen any of his, you have to see 2001 and Clark Orange wrote the most. That and then Doctor Strange Love, those three are like the, the the most important to see. But my personal favorite is Barry Lyndon. It's kind of the at the height of his powers, and it was a total flop. So it's like the height oh, really? of his crappulence. <laughs> yeah, and it kind of like it's just it's it's really 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 amazing. It's it's really famous for its cinematography. That's usually what only people talk about. But as as a movie, I really just love love the movie. Um, Interesting. And it said, you know, you don't you don't hear it brought up a lot. And when I finally saw it after seeing the other ones, I was like, holy shit. Yeah. Highly recommended. It is three hours. It's pretty long. A lot of people find it boring. So watch yeah. the movies first if you haven't seen them yet. Yeah. You know? Well, I really like his last movie, Eyes Wide Shut. I, I, shot. I saw I saw it in the theater. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. You <laughs> know the whole uh conspiracy behind I do. Uh, I do. I went deep on YouTube. Uh, yeah. I enjoyed that. I, I like I like this crazy YouTube content. I don't know how true it is, but I enjoyed it quite a bit. I know, I know. I, I take that stuff with a grain of salt, but sometimes like it's weird. Like I, I, I like the so the you know they put the digital people in the way that sucks. But I think the European version they're gone. But the, the I like the conspiracy. It's like no, you don't know what's cut out of there, and they they kill them and blah, blah blah. You know, like I I highly doubt that's true. But I do like the the. Did you go so deep that where they had the the newspaper and it had like. And then that his daughter was like uh, consumed by Scientology, and they're like trying to get her out. And like, no, I, I didn't know Scientology was involved. I know. Uh, well, there's so many of these conspiracies. I went too deep. I, I there's this guy I like, Robert Ayer. He's like the god of like over analyzing films. Like, I seriously believe like 80 percent of what he says is bullshit. But he'll just like break down a movie and just keep breaking it down and keep breaking it down until it's just complete insanity. But the ones he does on Kubrick, because Kubrick is you know. They're kind of weirdly conceivable because he's he not such a genius, but also that he was obsessed with like hiding symbology and using symbology in his films. Where I'm kind of like, ah, could be right, you know, like maybe this is this absurd analysis could be right, and I really enjoy those. But he goes like he'll, but he'll he'll analyze like a regular movie where you know that's not going on, and he'll bring in the most like avant garde breakdown. And it's like that's not possible. But his Kubrick ones I really really like, especially on 2001, and he's got some ones on uh, on occult stuff and Eyes Wide Shut. But there's all these guys with these Eyes Wide Shut ones. For some reason, Eyes Wide Shut is so popular with the internet insane community. And I think it, because of the, you know. The death that was soon after. Well, just they really love funny. anything kind of Illuminati or Shadow, whatever. You know, like, True, I think that I know, kind, of, kind of speaks to that. But there is this weird stuff where they'll be like, well, this is the Rothschild house. And, and these people are wearing the costumes much like this. And I'm like, oh, that's kind of weird. Yeah. <laughs> I know they go super deep into like the oh the stuffed animals at the end they're all lions to show like the king of the yeah, jungle yeah, yeah. or something yeah uh, and of course you know this it's funny but you know they have that movie about like the people analyze the shining because they're like the people are like the shining has to have deeper stuff they couldn't find and Leon Vitali who they had a, a documentary about recently he was just like this fucking bullshit man he's like I worked in this whole movie ridiculous <laughs> you know. so wait hold up is uh Robert Hare is he a Canadian psychologist too or am I looking at a different guy. Oh uh, no! I th- no, I think it's David Iyer. I could be wrong. What the? I've forgotten this guy's name. Uh, okay, I just might check this out after this podcast. I like doing uh, deep dives into some of my favorite like uh, pieces of media. I guess whether it's like a game or a movie. Like I love going to YouTube and just seeing. Some I do. Extra, it's like, it's a massive. I'm like I don't know why I'm doing this. Like why am I watching a four hour breakdown on Dark Souls? I've already beaten <laughs> the game twice. Like I don't. Why do I need this guy's analysis? Like I'm doing waste of my fucking time. I'm doing that right now with a uh, Alan Wake two, which is also really awesome. Are you playing right now? I I saw the the demo. Um, like I went to Games Fest, so I saw them play a little bit of it. I, I played Control, the the which apparently ties into it or something. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it's very cool. It's very like meta. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there the scene I saw, the voice of okay, they had Sam Lake, the creator. And voiced by Max Payne, like he was in the original Max Payne, he's just a side character, but it's yeah. Max Payne. 
and Sam Lake, like from X Pain One, and it's sort of like you're supposed to be like, hey, it's X Pain. It's just kind of weird, you know. And they get Alan Wake's voice actor playing a different guy too, not actually Alan Wake. Like, it's oh really? Very, yeah. Okay, that's wacky. Yeah, it, yeah, it's purposely wacky too, which I like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. All right. Just last question. Just top three favorite artists. See, so what I sorry, I gotta let everyone down. My, most of all, my interesting stuff are really boring. So if we went to like top twenty or stuff, I'd have all these really cool esoteric artists and cool picks that would be showing me how cool I am. But if you're gonna go <laughs> like top three, I just have really generic choices for everything when it comes to movies or everything because it's like it's like the top of the top. So like if we're going like top three, I'm gonna be like Black Sabbath, you know, like Led Zeppelin. Like these are not gonna blow it. Like Metallica, you know, like like we're talking okay. like like some people at the top, you know. Okay, um, cool. Well, the top three, you know, that you, you know. Take on an island if it was the last three bands you could listen to for sure. Okay, but how? Oh, actually, top... I wouldn't take any of those bands because I listen to way too much. I don't listen to them anymore. You know. Okay, like, well, I, I, can't, about... I can't listen to any more Pink Floyd. I, I'm fucking tapped. <laughs> it's like my favorite three... bands of all time. You know. Uh, um, more obscure bands. I guess um, like the Gerudi column is huge. I mean, the weirdly, if I was on a um, on an island, I would choose that because it's like a very, uh, I really like to listen to it like ambiently. Cause like, honestly, if I just had one CD, that's my life, it fucking drive me nuts. Um, so that's a really big one for me. I love, uh, I don't know, so much, so many groups I like. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, it's have hard to, to choose. Uh, these I'd questions to, always, to, these questions yeah. are always the toughest for, uh, this, 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 this could take too long. Yeah, fair enough. Well, <laughs> I dude, love the doors. I love the doors. Sorry, not gonna blow anyone's mind with that. <laughs> yeah, I like the same uh, music taste as my dad. Yeah, I know. Just class <laughs> rock. I mean, just, yeah. it's just like if we're gonna talk like the like the hallowed era of like who's the best. I'm like, well, I gotta go with the classic rock guys, you know. But of course, you know, there's tons of bands that are my favorite. I, so much of the music from the 2000s I like is just really like Glass Candy Chromatics. Some of my favorite artists of all time. But if you yeah. have to put a gun to my head and be like, you know, it's, it's gonna sound a lot like, like Rolling Stones, top 500, you know. Yeah. Well. I don't know, that's what I was talking about earlier with the classics. Like those bands really have songs that are timeless. And yeah, that's true. Now, granted, yeah, you're like, are those? Could you have classics like that? Probably not. I mean, you know, the amazing thing is not only is music so much more important than it was. It was the only for most youths going. It's basically the only thing going on. There's a few other things like you know that you're into and getting fucked up, obviously. But like, it it was just music. There wasn't like just conventions all over the place. Like we're like. You like music and video games and you like study the lore of all this dorky shit. Like there's just look the bandwidth of all this time. Now there's like podcasts taking up every moment of your like time. It's like when, you know, fucking Jimi Hendrix comes out, like there wasn't a whole lot else going on. And it's like that. It was fucking mind blowing. It was fucking mind blowing. And it was brilliant. And like you would just sit at home and like work on this and be influenced by all the stuff that wasn't even rock and roll. By the time it comes out, there's just way less stuff around it you know yeah. music was transgressive and it was the, the the culture and like and if you're a young rebellious person like that's basically it you have music you know they say sex drugs rock and roll that's all that was on the menu you know yeah. that was the best shit so uh you know we have a, just a really the amount of shit going on is is crazy and it's kind of a joke too it's a classic like you can't have jim morrison on social media yeah you can't fucking be lame as hell there's there's Jimmy? no like doing a fucking doing the, what we're doing right now this is like <laughs> You know, like or like fucking talking to his phone, yeah, or just your... tweeting, and all his shitty opinions. You're like, this guy's a fucking bozo. But Jimmy Hendrix taking some selfies too, or something. That yeah, I just ruined it all. But yeah. you know, he's fucking amazing music. He's rock god, skinny. He's because he's eaten in five days. He's doing all his acid. That's a fucking legend. He's you know, he's, he's amazing. He, he lived his whole life. In five years, he's fucking dead. Like that's a rock star. <laughs> that's not possible now. You know, just like if this is just a different time. It's the technology. You know, we're just humans. And if you you know, Wizard of Oz, peek behind the cu curtain. You know, there is is this dorky thing. People say, oh, your crush is like taking a shit right now. Like you know, they kind of like <laughs> you know, everyone awkwardly dies on a fucking gurney or like. You know, and you shit your pants. It's just like there's, there's so much indignity in human life you, to make the the stories about life or a play or whatever. You need to not see the other stuff. The reason why, you know, life itself is not narrative. It's just all this bullshit happening. Dominoes falling since the creation of the universe. But if I show you the cool parts of Metal Burb's life where he like discovers music and then does this and there's a beginning, middle, and end, it's a great story because I we cut all the shit you don't see in the movie like him wiping his ass or whatever, you know? Exactly. So And so if we film and record every second of our day and have all this shit you got to do, it's like, yeah, it's, you can't. You can be a big personality, but yes, yeah, it's, it's hard to be like a classic or, and no one really believes in that sort of magic anymore. And, you know, and it's always been going this way with technology, like in the olden times, like you didn't have a fucking map. Everything is fucking magical. 
Like, you know, you just believe some shit. You're like, ah, the wizard came. You're like, really? Shit. <laughs> like, Dragon in the forest. Like, I, I buy it. I, I don't know anything. You know, it's like, like it, it, life was very lyrical. And they talked about that, too. So those are your top three favorite bands. <laughs> Probably. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, they're just great. But uh, I guess what I would say is uh, we can still have a great fucking time. We can still uh, we can put out exciting music. We can innovate in music and we can all be friends on the Internet. And it is a, I think actually this is a very fun time to be alive. You know, despite what might happen soon, what later, it could get very bad. But for the moment, just for the in a, in a nice country, for this, for this moment, let's have a good time. Let's see. I agree. Hopefully, yeah. you also need your own podcast or something. Oh God, this is too many fucking fuck these fucking podcasts. Um, so many <laughs> podcasts. You're on one right now, man. Yeah, it's true. I know. No, I actually, actually, I really appreciate. It. I think what's great what uh, what you're doing is like there's so many um other things in music or like you know because the the sort of music magazine is dead and the editorial website is is dead. Like no one really goes for that anymore, but people do, people want to find out new music and people want sort of more like a uh, personal connection to someone else. So I feel like podcasts now. So, you know, we really need whatever you, you're in college of the influence, like crit- people in the music space who are like recommending. And it's like, it's like, you know, that's how you get into band. Your friend recommends it to you. And it's a lot better than like, fucking uh, release radar or, or something, you know, a, a yeah, buddy telling I- me you got to listen to this means so much more, you know? I hate the term influencer, but that's basically what I am. Yeah, um, it's a heavy influencer, and I'm glad we have them. Like, we didn't, I, I don't know, we didn't have that stuff before, and we really need it, you know? It's I was talking about it with someone that it feels like almost like a necessity with what I'm doing because um, basically there's so much music that's just being put out online. Bedroom musicians are constantly putting out music that you need certain people to kind of weed out what's good and like what's. I mean, that was the point of the music magazine. There's there's still too much. Like, you're supposed to read the review and they could convince you or they get an interview. Like, who's got this kind of time? Like, someone's got to tell you, you know? Yeah, and people don't don't read shit anymore. They just, you know, they're on their phones. Yeah, definitely. And that's kind of the funny thing, too. Shit has has to show up in front of your face at that moment. And and, and that's odd. So, you know, that you you have a trust, like a lot of you and a lot of people like to have trusted audiences. Like, that's that's musical community, you know? That's where it feels good. Well, dude, I'm ab- absolutely just thrilled to have, you know, your music and you on the podcast. Um, I'm super excited for Rat Wars, which is coming out when? December 7th. Uh, we'll, we'll send it to you. But yeah, thank you so much. I really wanted to be on this podcast. I really appreciate you having me. Um, let me know when you can put it out, though, because I got this T-shirt. I don't want to. I, I, I got to get this T-shirt immediately. <laughs> OK, probably like uh, max, like a week. A week. All right. Latest, oh, that's fine. A week. That's fine. That, 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 that'll, that'll put some fire in the ass. We'll get this T-shirt ASAP. OK. Put it out for, pre- put it out for pre-order. <laughs> <laughs> but dude enjoy uh the barbecue i am probably gonna go watch some casino or heat dude, or watch casino watch heat just have, have a great uh, you're in for a treat i would love to be in your position and not have seen these movies and get to watch them for the first time again you know yeah totally i should film a reaction to it or something <laughs> why not <laughs> yeah why not <laughs> all right thanks again dude for coming out awesome man hey yeah, i really appreciate it, dude thanks so much for covering us yeah have a good tour by the way with sleep token right. stuff well right. actually hopefully i see you in uh london let me know That'll be insane. Think about it. Think about it. I will. I will. All right. All right. Peace. Peace.